one of the things that I picked up uh, from Rick during the time that I studied with him uh, was an appreciation for the traditional tone colors, the real dark, warm, um, complex colors that the horn can make. And one of the particularly difficult things to do uh, on the modern double horn is to keep those characteristics but also sort of update the technical capabilities so that people can do what's asked of them in, in, in modern rep um, but still have that nice traditional uh, natural horn sound quality. Uh, one of the things that I do is I build the F side of the horn in a very particular way um, and I have a chance to show you uh, a few of these design elements uh, since I've got it apart I'm about to uh, put this particular horn together. So I uh, thought maybe I'd just show you a couple of these design elements and um, talk through uh, how I balance the traditionalness and, and the, the modern qualities of these horns. So here we are, we're looking at the back of the horn and this is the part that I'm referring to as the F branch comes up from the valves around the horn and up into a tuning slide and then down to the bottom. Uh, a Geyer style double horn treats this F side as almost a valved extension, uh, as if it were a B flat horn with a F extension constructed in such a way that the F extension went through the slides. So, um, so one of the first things to notice about this part is it is a uh, multi-plane part. Uh, so it has a straight angle. This is the part that will go uh, into the valves here this way. Um, now a lot of people have incorrectly described this bottom portion of the bend as a twist. Um, and people who don't understand this part very well um, will say that it's bent and then it's it, you know it's torqued and it's twisted up this way to get this extra plane here. And that's actually not how this part um, is made or should be made. Uh, it's certainly not how it's made here uh, in this shop. The, uh, what ends up happening is you have this um, this plane here first that is set and then the curve is put in. So the curve is actually bent. Um, all of these planes are bent at, at the same time. Getting traditional colors and good response has two elements to it. The first element is we I spoke about the the long jointing between the first branch and the long F. The second part to this is the stress that this branch puts on the horn. And what I'm going to show you is the way, the order that I solder this in to make sure that there is no stress um, on this branch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it up and get it prepped to solder. All right, so I've just wired everything up and uh, these are not tight. You can see I can, I can move these wires up very easily. These are not cranking and holding the part. They're basically just going to hold this firm so that I can do my checks and then solder and know that, that things aren't gonna move around. Um, and there's two checks that I'm gonna do here and I'll have to adjust the camera so you can really see what what it is that I'm seeing. Alright, so here's where the first check happens. This is the joint. You can see this is the double ferrules uh, up at the top here. And what I'm going to do is, before I solder, I'm just going to slide this ferrule away and make sure that you can see I've got perfectly square joint here and it doesn't move. That's the important thing. That that this part doesn't move depending on whether or not the the ferrule is in place or not. So I know that there's there's no pulling, there's no motion, 
uh, in this joint at all. All right, so up here, here's where we're going to do the second check. You'll see that I have loose, again, loose wires here holding this tube. Um, it's not soldered. The braces are not soldered to this tube. And what I want to check is if I very carefully pull this outer slide tube off and expose the cutoff portion of the F branch, I want to make sure that this branch doesn't move or, or ping or do anything like that. I should be able to, to put this back on very carefully without any motion happening in the branch. So that lets me know that the, the accuracy of my soldering is going to be determined by how well I've bent the part, not how well I've clamped everything together. So we've checked underneath this ferrule. We've checked to make sure that this long joint is perfectly closed up along the entire way, and it is. Checked the bottom portion of this bin to make sure that the porting into this tube is perfect. And now I'm ready to do the initial soldering of this branch. All right, so we just finished up here the initial soldering. A um, couple of things. So this joint uh, is what I call a pull joint or a through pull, which means that I am only going to solder from one side and I'm going to drag the solder all the way to the other side of the ferrule. Now this is a little different than when if you put solder on both sides of the ferrule because if you do put solder on both sides uh, you can create an air gap in the middle of this ferrule and never know it. So uh, by, by doing a through pull this way I can make sure that I see the solder go in from one side, completely fill the joint, and go to the other side. Now I can do that because my joint is, is flush and square underneath this ferrule. If there was a gap, um, then I wouldn't, it would sort of curl under the, into the tube, and I'd have solder that leaked into this joint. So on the long joint here, um, you can see this is the only evidence of any soldering. This is an impossibly thin joint. Um, people sometimes like to talk about the weight issue, um, and if I were to use two braces here, I would increase the weight of this joint by over 50 times. So this um, this is this uses such tiny amounts of solder, and again, it's because these parts fit together so well um, that I can create this joint which has a lot of acoustical stability without adding uh, any weight to the horn. So the last element here is um, that you'll notice that I didn't put this tube on there. I did not solder that in. Whenever you do a long joint like this, this bottom portion has a tendency to end up in some place other than where you planned for it. And that is actually a big reason why you don't see horns with such long jointing very much anymore because um, if you don't do it properly you can introduce a lot of stress into the horn. Now I've actually already done all of the stress relief the stress relieving procedures and, and moving this around. Um, so what I'm going to show you is my last check before I solder on this tube. So I've zoomed in on this area um, where we did the last check and I have the tube that I'm going to attach here and I'm going to lay it into the cradle here and I'm just going to slide it right over and again I'm looking to feel any drag in the tube and I'm looking to see any motion in the branch or to see this tube lift in any direction out of the braces or anything like that 
and it just slides in there just like butter just perfectly so this is ready to uh, solder in there the last thing I'm gonna do before I solder this in here or, or attempt this solder joint is I'm gonna take a caliper measurement um, of the the distance on the lead pipe and the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I want to make sure that after I solder this in that it has not pushed or pulled on this mast here and the way that I'll be able to tell is if this uh, dimension changes at all so I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go and all soldered up all right um, so the braces have been soldered in this has been this joint here has been soldered uh, again I've gone ahead and done all of the stress relief um, on this joint and on these joints so I have a note this is where the caliper was reading on the main tuning slide so I'm going to check and make sure there's that I've taken all of the lateral motion out so we'll go from the bottom first so 913.5 to 914.5 somewhere in there so that's pretty good it's upside down but it's all right and here at the top we've got 9.13.5, 9.14 so perfect so we, we have it exactly to where it was um, This whenever you're soldering here it always tends to sort of push in one direction or the other so we've gotten that all taken care of which means that this branch insulation is now complete well there you have it this horn is ready to go and uh, I am expecting a fantastically responsive and uh, richly colored F side out of this horn. Hope you enjoyed this explanation of some of these techniques and some of my standards, and I will catch you next time. Thanks!